Good day. My name is Dr. Martin Huber. I am the head of good weighing practice at Metro Toledo. On June 3rd, 2013, the United States Pharmacopeia has published a second supplement to the USP 36 National Formulary 31. This video informs you about the relevant changes in the general chapters about weighing, namely USP General Chapters 41 and 1251, which will be official on December 1st, 2013. I'm going to show you the implications of these new chapters for the quality management of balances in three parts. How to test the weighing equipment, how often to test it, and how to avoid weighing errors. Probably you're already acquainted with the repeatability test of the old general chapter 41 weights and balances. Here comes the new chapter with a few small changes. Repeatability is satisfactory if two times the standard deviation of the weighted value divided by the nominal value of the weight used does not exceed 0.10%. In the new USP 41, first, the expansion factor goes down from 3 to 2. Second, the weighing tolerance changes from 0.1% to 0.10%, meaning a deliberalization of rounding. These two changes reflect current metrology practices and virtually compensate each other, so in most cases the minimum weight will remain unchanged. This change was pretty straightforward. Here comes something new. A lower limit for the repeatability test. If the standard deviation obtained is smaller than 0.41 d, where d is the scale interval, replace this standard deviation with 0.41 d. So in case the standard deviation is zero, or just very small, the readability of the balance is not high enough to detect deviations. Therefore, the dominant uncertainty of such a balance is not the repeatability error, but the rounding error, which amounts to 0.41d. So much for repeatability testing. USP 41 now also requires testing for accuracy. When substances must be accurately weighed, the weighing should be performed using a calibrated balance that meets the requirements defined for repeatability and accuracy. What's the difference between the two? Repeatability assesses the random error of measurements, or more scientifically speaking, the closeness of agreement between values obtained by replicate measurements on the same object. Accuracy, on the other hand, assesses systematic deviations, or in other words, the trueness of measurements, how close they are to the true value. To weigh reliably, both repeatability and accuracy must meet the defined tolerance of 0.10%. So what test weight should be used for accuracy testing? A test weight is suitable if it has a mass between 5% and 100% of the balance's capacity. Note that the current widespread practice of accuracy testing with small weights at the working point is not allowed anymore. At this lower end of measurement range, repeatability is the dominant error and dwarfs the corresponding accuracy error. Hence, for reliable testing of accuracy, a weight between 5 and 100% of the capacity must be used. The revised USB weighing chapters 41 and 1251 provide valuable new information to improve the quality management of balances. On December 1, 2013, they will be official. We help you achieve compliance with the new USB chapters. Choose the fast lane for boarding with the weighing experts from Mantla Toledo.